Hello and welcome to this new video. This time I'm going to talk about some of the most common Blender questions that I've seen on forums. Most of these questions are from people starting with Blender, but these are mistakes that you can avoid if you start with the basics. I made a video about that. This is not in any specific order, so I'm going to talk about the questions and I will show you a quick way to solve that. Why is my render black or blank? This is probably one of the questions that I've seen a lot more than others. Sometimes it happens that you have your scene complete, your objects are in the correct position, and then you hit render and there's no render, just a blank area, or sometimes a gray one. And the most common thing to check is the compositing area. If you go to the compositing area and use nodes is on, you will have a render layer and a composite node. And you just need to connect these two in order to output the render. In some cases, you will see the use node, but you won't be seeing any render layer or composite node. In this case, the first thing to do is to add them back. You could do this by pressing Shift 8 S and type the names. And after that, connect those two and you will have your render. Why is my render darker than in the viewport shading? This is a common mistake and sometimes it's not because the person asking the question skip at the basic, but more because some users making basic videos never explain that the viewport shading is getting the lights from a high dynamic range image that is only working for the preview and not for the render. In order to get the lights for the final render you need to do one of two things. The first thing is to add a light source. This can be done with Shift 8 and then selecting the light. The second way to add a light to the scene is with an HDRI or high dynamic range image, which drives me to the next question. How can I add an HDRI to my render? To do this one, we need to go to the shader editor and switch the type from object to world and you will see a background node. Add an environment node with Shift 8 S, a mapping node and a texture coordinate. Connect those and after that you need to add the HDR image to the environment node. And there are a lot of websites with free HDR image that you could download. Here's another question for the environment lights. How can I use an HDRI to light my scene with a transparent or a different background color? Okay, we already know how to add an HDRI, so let's start with the transparent background. This is an easy one. The only thing that you need to do is to go to the render properties, go to film, transparent and that's it. You now have a transparent background for your render. The second part of the question is background color but with the HDRI still on. There are two ways that I know about doing this. The first one is with the compositor. Render a scene with a transparent background. Then go to the compositing and in here put the mouse on the image socket of the render layer and press Ctrl Shift left click to create a viewer node. After this press Shift 8 S and type color ramp or add an image node to add your own image background. Now press Shift 8 S again and type alpha over. Connect the color or image background to the first image socket of the alpha over and the render layer image to the second image socket of the alpha over and now connect that to the viewer node and if that's what you want connect that alpha over to the composite node to render the scene. The second way to do this is directly to the wall of the scene. Start by making sure that the transparent is off. Go to the shader editor and switch from object to world type. Assuming that you already have an HDRI connected to the background, select the background node and press Shift D to make a copy. Change the color, then press Shift 8 S to create a mixed shader and connect both background nodes. And finally, you need to make a light path node with the Shift 8 S and connect the is camera ray socket to the mix shader factor. And that's it for that. Next one. Why some parts of my mesh are invisible when I export the object to a different 3D application? This happens to me when I started. And the answer to this one is face orientation. Every polygon created has a front and a back face. In Blender you can check the face orientation if you go to overlay face orientation. Once you turn that on, you will see the front face in blue and the back one in red. 
and a way to solve this is to go to edit mode by pressing tab then select everything with A and finally you need to go to mesh normals recalculate outside that's another one next how to make a mesh transparent with Eevee if you are using Eevee even if you add a transparent node to the object shader you won't be seeing the transparency of the object by default to solve this you need to go to the material properties then to settings and switch the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend one more why do I have extra objects when I render my scene sometimes you have your scene ready everything is how you like it but when you hit render you see an extra object on your scene most of the time these are objects that you use for the scene but then you turn it off the problem is that these objects are not visible for your 3D viewport but they are visible for the final render so the two options that you have to solve this are to delete the objects or to go to filter on the outliner turn on disable in render and then you could turn that new icon on and off for those objects next one how can I add decals or stickers to an object? The easiest way that I know for this one is by selecting the object that you want. Go to the shader editor. If you don't have a material, you need to add one to start. Once you have that, you will see your principal BSDF. The thing here this is that you need a principal BSDF for your sticker and a second one for your main texture. So make a copy of that one now that you have one let's add a texture node mapping node and a texture coordinates and connect those like this then you need to open your sticker in the image texture node and connect that to the principal bsdf make sure that your sticker has a transparent background go back to the image texture node switch from repeat to clip and use the mapping node to make the image smaller and also use the location and rotation to move the sticker to the position that you want after you finish that press shift a and type mix shader add that in front of the principal bsdf the way that you need to make this connection is the sticker on the second socket and the main texture on the first socket and finally Take the alpha socket from the sticker texture and connect that to the factor. And now we have a sticker on an object. One thing that I would like to say is that for me the best way to add stickers, decals and textures is by unwrapping the UVs. And edit the surface using Blender or a second application for image manipulation or 3D paint. I'm not showing you this method because it could be different for every object. But let me know if you want to see a tutorial about that. Okay, I hope you liked this video. Leave a comment and I will see you next time. Bye.